Welcome and thanks for being here today. It's really nice you're able to join us while I tell you a little bit about masterminding and how it differs from networking and what you can get from today's presentation. Welcome and thanks for being here. Really pleased to, to have you here and hope that when other people come in it doesn't make a, make a difference to the room. Bus how many people here are in business? Everybody's got their own business? Okay. If you're in business alone, it can be very, very lonely. And it doesn't matter how many people you employ or um, you have working around you, it can still be very lonely if you're the person who's running the business and you need other people to talk to. So that's really what masterminding is all about, is about giving you that ability to be with, in a room with a group of other people, small group of people, and I'll talk more about that later, that will give you the ability to talk about whatever you need to talk about uh, business in a really confidential space that is going to support you to grow your business. First of all, because I haven't met some of you before, who am I? I'm a mother and a grandmother. Um, I created Masterminding nearly eight years ago now, after being away from Brisbane for a few years, came back and because I'd been teaching people how to network for, at that time, tw over 20 years, I realised people really weren't getting relationship building. We were calling it networking, but they really didn't understand what networking is. And for me, networking is about you go to a movie and you talk about the movie and tell people about it. Without any expectation of return, you talk about it or you go to somewhere and you have coffee and you have good service or you have bad service. You're going to talk about that. That is networking. What is traditionally happening in networking today is that people are so busy pushing themselves out into the marketplace and talk about themselves that they forget to talk to anybody else and ask anybody else um, you know, what they're about and why they're where they're at. And this is really important because you go to get business and that's not what networking is all about. It's not about going to get. It's all about going to give and by giving you will receive. So this is where masterminding comes in where you're in small groups, uh, confidential groups that give you the opportunity to be with people uh, who are similar. Uh, they have businesses at a similar level where they can they talk the same language and there's going to be abilities to joint venture collaborate whatever so this is why masterminding is so important um, for people that they un they understand what it is all about uh, for me i started in business in 1989 uh, was my first business i had been in business with my husband at that prior to that but in 1989 i started my first business which is a personal development natural therapy center it was probably one of the first in Brisbane. Um, and in those days, people didn't really understand, they didn't understand what personal development and natural therapies were all about. I did that for five years and I realised what I was doing. I was speaking to the converted. There were people who needed promoting, didn't know how to promote themselves. And at that stage, I was really learning about what um, it was to put yourself into the marketplace. So there was no such thing as networking because networking in those days was all about computer peripherals. Some of you may know Robin Henderson. Robin and I started at the same time. She went corporate, I went small business. Uh, but up until then, no one really was talking about networking as such. So in 1995, I, I realised that because I'd been speaking to the converted, I needed to be talking to small business people about promotion. And it was about networking about how to build business relationships through word of mouth marketing um, and getting their message out there in their own way. And of course it is refined, but as I said, I discovered that um, people weren't learning what they needed, to, what I believe they needed to learn to make really good solid relationships and that's hence masterminding starting. I love people. I have a passion for small business people. It's being able to support somebody to grow and become who they can become. And I believe that whoever we are, 
we are the same as we are as an individual as to who we are when we're in business. We used to be in years gone by be able to wear two faces. You could go to work and you could be Mr. Nice Guy at work, but then you go home and beat your wife up. It's different, or husband. Well, in those days, it was different because the women didn't work the way women work now. It was a different marketplace. In those days, also, we used to have what was called the old boys network. The old boys network now, as it, as it was, was all about, I've got a best friend. He's a nice guy. He's a guy I spend time with. I'll refer him to someone. It didn't mean he was any good. He knew what he was doing. Today, when you refer something, it's your reputation that's online. Because if I refer something to some, or someone to one of you, and it's a bad referral, who's going to cop it? Me. It's a different marketplace. And because of the internet, that has changed so dramatically also. So now we, have, we look at business and we look at people very differently. Because for me personally, if I can't find you on the, the net, internet, and I can't find out what I want to find out about you on the internet, I wouldn't, I, I'm not going to bother doing business with you. Because I want to know who you are. And the internet gives me the ability to do that. Bec and so your reputation will come out via the internet. So learning how to develop that, that part of you and how to develop your reputation is really very, very important. So as John mentioned, masterminding with Napoleon Hill and Think and Grow Rich, ba have based masterminding on his teachings. The formula that I use uh, has been created over nearly eight years and it changes. My groups this year have got a totally new, new process, process about them. It's not what it was last year or the year before or six, seven years ago, eight years ago. I find that for me as an individual, I'm learning every time I run a session, I personally learn something. I'm not in any session, I'm a facilitator of it, but because of things that are people saying and because of things that people are talking about, I think, oh, that's good, I like that. That's another way of looking at it. Because for me, the important thing in masterminding is that you put a group of people in a room who are all different mindsets. So we cover a whole spectrum of mindsets. That way, people's peripheral vision is open so dramatically um, that they get information from where they would never get information. Uh, and I'm a great profile. I love profiling people. Um, and I, even from last year, I have refined totally how I do that because I brought another profiling system in. I use Wealth Dynamics, but I've now got the Herman Brain Dominance Instrument and that marries beautifully um, with now with um, Wealth Dynamics. And so I don't even need to do a profile anymore. I can instantly with that profile someone. So anyway, Napoleon Hill wrote, masterminding is a coordination of knowledge and effort of two or more people who work toward a definite purpose in the spirit of harmony. No two minds ever come together without thereby creating a third invisible intangible force which can be likened to a third mind. So there's me and my mind, there's you and your mind. We come together, we get three minds. Somebody else comes into the mix, you've got them all. And then you've got those, and then you've got that, and then you've got them singly. So you develop a whole lot of different minds because when you're, spe when you're speaking to people that you get to know, you verbalize very, very differently because of the interaction you have with them. So as a result of that, your peripheral vision will be opened and you will start seeing something that may have been a challenge for you very differently to the way you saw it before you started talking about it. And to me, that's what masterminding is all about, is putting a group of people together. I don't have any more than six people in a room. Um, I have worked between four and 12. And I found for me, um, and for my type of masterminding, six is the magic number. Uh, and if six people come together and I make sure they have a, a, 
they, we cover the whole spectrum of personalities. By doing that, then I know we're going to get the best out of a group. So it's really important that the group, people have to become very committed. And masterminding is all about being responsible, being reliable, being trustworthy, being honest, having integrity, those basic values that most of us, hopefully all of us, live by. Masterminding is different. I learn about people on whether they show up, whether they don't show up, whether they let me know they're showing up, whether they don't let me know they're showing up. It gives, starts to give me, you know, on how you play your life is how I develop my profile on you. Because you're telling me everything about you by your actions. As you do everybody else, but they might know to necessarily look for that. You all know who that man is, no doubt. Richard Branson. And he says an entrepreneur is an innovator, a job creator, a game changer, a business leader, a disruptor and an adventurer. And I believe if you're not those things, you're not an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is someone who's going to go up and down, who's going to have a fight within them to achieve what it is they want to achieve. It's okay you to have a job or you can have your own business and be an entrepreneur. They're very different personality styles. There's no right or wrong because we are who we are and we need to have both. We've got, we, you know, we need people who work for people and we need people who run their own businesses or they run whatever. So it's really important you work out who are you so you know because I find um, people who go into business and especially if they've never read the e-myth, and I know you guys know the e-myth well, and have you read the e-myth? By Michael Gerber. It's a really good book for people who are in business and the, who are going to start a business. And the reason for that is that he talks about the difference between having a job and being an entrepreneur. And it's really important that... Um, just because you can do your trade very well, whatever that trade is that you do, doesn't mean you're a business owner. I highly recommend the book. Just go and get it on Kindle and read it because it's a really, really good book. It's called The E-Myth Revisited. Being a business owner, for all of you that are, know that this is what happens in business. You go up and down in any one day. You can have all sorts of emotions happening in your business. You're going to have good times, you're going to have bad times. We're going to go like this on a roller coaster because that's what business is all about. Whether anyone else is aware of that, but you know in your own self, the business for you is you're going to have your highs and you're going to have your lows. So the one thing with masterminding that's really important um, if you're a business owner and an entrepreneur and this is happening which it will be happening in your life um, masterminding gives you the ability to never be on your own again from my experience from masterminding and I've had some hundreds of people now go through masterminding over the last few years I find that they um, they develop relationships with people within their group. And it's interesting, the people they develop relationships with are quite often their opposite personality style and they're people they would have never become necessarily friends with. Because when you, you start masterminding in a group, you're going to have people with you that you're not naturally going to be resonating to if you're out there, say, networking. And then you start to find out about people who have a totally different mindset and their mindset of what it is they do is so valuable to you. Because the aim is to have a, a collection of, it's all about skill sets. The reason I want to have personality profiles is I want to know your skill sets, all your skill sets, what you've done and what you haven't done in your life because that's going to tell me what you do for a living isn't necessarily you using your skill sets. And I find a high, large percentage of people are not really doing um, what they really want to be doing. Because I believe 
if you're living on purpose or you know and you're really living with your vision and you're, and you're doing your mission, your life will be very different. So for me, it's getting people to understand what their vision is, where they want to go, what they want to do, and then having a group of people who are going to help them to actually achieve that. And for me, it's out of that, and depending on where any individual is in the, at that particular time, it will actually give me the advantage of seeing uh, and supporting them to work out where they want to be, what they want to do, what they want to achieve in their life. So what happens in a mastermind group? We meet fortnightly, over six months, so there are 12 sessions. It's closed and confidential. It is guaranteed to increase your productivity if this is what you want, what you want masterminding for. Or your resources, your knowledge, your contacts, your way you research, your relationship marketing, your leadership skills and your accountability. That's what masterminding will give you, if that's what you want. People come into masterminding for very different reasons. Depending on where they are in their business as to whether they're there because they need to earn more money or they're needing more leads or they're needing to do something different. Or are they there because they're needing another business person that they can talk to who can support them to go where they want to go because they know what they're doing. So I have two different types of masterminding which I'll mention later. Um, action plans, over six months, we do two action plans, 90 day plans, um, and you're, every fortnight you're gonna have somebody keeping you accountable to that. Um, and of course we create vision, mission, and I believe everybody needs to think about, if you're over the age of 30, you need to be thinking about, what's your legacy? What are you here for? Are you about making a difference? What do you want? Because until you know your own individual why, you, you're just going to do day by day. So masterminding in its own way is an enormous growth for any individual because you will change because of the people you become associated with. So through masterminding, different things will happen. You will collaborate, you will joint venture, you will do business referrals, you will share resources and you will create really, really strong friendships. And I find in every mastermind group, everyone, you, more, 99% of the time, finds one person that they really, really resonate. And that person is somebody who will be with them probably for the rest of their, their working life or their life. And as I said before, it's quite often somebody who they never thought would be somebody that they would suddenly... And there could be a great age difference from somebody in their 20s to somebody in their 60s or 70s. Doesn't make any difference because we're all looking for di different things. You have your own counsellor advisory boards. The one thing with masterminding that I find um, is fascinating over anything else is the fact that everybody in that room has no invested interest in anyone else's business. Yet they give her their time, they give her their intellectual property, they give their support to a group of five other people in that room that they have no invested interest in. And this is what the bonding, the trust that is built within a group, what it brings in. For me in a, a room I like, for me, it's important that that trust comes in in the first session we have. By the second, if somebody, if there's not going to be a fit there, if I've done my job well enough, there's going to be a fit. Occasionally, somebody will come in and there just isn't a fit. Because I find a lot of people, who they say they are, aren't necessarily who they are. And we find that out sometimes the hard way. Um, because people have got to be prepared to give. So to have your own board, um, I, I pick people who are going to complement each other. Not necessarily, I'm not picking them because they're, I think they're going to become best buddies. It's because they have skill sets that they need for supporting each other. There's accountability built into the program. There's specialist speakers. If the group is needing that, I will bring in speakers. Um, and that depending on the individuals. And with that, I mix up with a lot of different masterminders. 
there are friendships, there's advisor, uh, advisors and counsel. The council process is a totally new process that's coming in this year um, that is very, very effective um, and I believe it will change masterminding quite dramatically as a result of this new process that's coming in and the personal profiling so people get to know and understand who they are as an individual themselves. As I said, it's confidential and it's accountable. Um, it's all about teamwork, it's about leadership, it's um, coaching and mentoring, and it's supporting. That, to me, is what masterminding is about. It removes the roadblocks. All of us as individuals have things in our life that um, stop us from being the best we can be. And if you can work out through, pr you will, this will automatically happen as a result of the the program, you will start to see where your own blocks are. And that's really important for me that we can clear those so you can move forward. Uh, so as I said, there's big growth that will happen as a result of masterminding. Um, so the aim of a mastermind group is to support you to move to where you want to go as an individual. There's no right and there's no wrong place for where you want to be you will be where you decide you want to go. It is a group's responsibility to help you go there. Um, it's open space, it's active listening. And this is the other thing that I find is missing out of networking. There's no what I call active listening. There's no really hearing what someone is saying because people are too concerned with what they want to say and the information they want to give. And as a result of that, they, they're not really listening to what anyone is saying. So active listening is another thing that is going to become really even more, um, made far more conscious in, in the new groups. The one thing that fascinates me with the groups also is there's no judgment. For me, the aim of bringing people together is that people accept people 100% for who they are. There's not a lot of places you can go where there's not going to be any judgment. Because unfortunately, as people, this is what we do. So the one thing with masterminding is to actually create that within the room. There is no judgment of where anybody is, who they are, what they are. The whole aim is to support them to actually achieve what it is they want to achieve. And they're the ones who set what it is they want to achieve. I start off with, you know, in the very beginning when we start the very first day, what is it you, what do you expect from masterminding? What do you want? But I find now within probably two and a half months, it's always before the third month, we start discovering what they set off for is not what they're setting off for at all. I've also found um, over the years, the people come into masterminding and within three months have closed their business down and started a new business because they realise they're in the wrong place. What they're doing is wrong for them. They're not really doing what makes their heart sing. And to me, it's all about getting up in the morning and wanting to go to work. Wanting to do because you love what you do. Life is too tough to do, go to do something you don't want to do. So for me, it's all about, does it make you sing? Does your heart sing? When you think of your vision and where you want to go and what you want your business to be, does it, do you get the goosebumps or do you bring tears to your eyes? Or does it bring an emotion into you? Because if it doesn't, you're in the wrong business. So for me, it's really important. And the self-pacing is important because the self-paced growth is up to the individual. Everyone is different. We do it differently. Masterminding is a very big personal growth process. You can't help but grow because the process takes you there because of the non-judgments, because of the acceptance, because of hearing people who are a profile that is so very, very different to your own. For me as an extrovert, I had to, and profiling taught me this, was I had to work, spend my 
learn how to work with introverts and I find now I get more introverts because I do life very differently. And that comes as a result of learning to understand people and where their needs are. Because most extroverts to an introvert are quite threatening. We don't mean to be, it's just that we're very loud and we usually, normally in the past, I would be in very, very bright colours, I don't do that anymore. So it's really important that through the process you learn to understand the differences in personalities. And then it's up to the individual what they, they do with that. I sit in a group with Margaret every month and we talk nothing but personality styles. Getting to understand, getting deeper, deeper knowledge and, and information on, on a particular style. And we do it by the way we talk because of the way we talk tells somebody who they are. And so you learn to use all the senses um, and I think this is the most important thing which in a group you learn because there's no one person who gets more time than anybody else. No, nobody gets any more time. It's a very, the process is set. It's very structured for that particular reason because I don't want anyone in there that isn't going to be getting what they want from it. And here again, it's for them to sit up and say what, if they're not getting what they want, too. And, you know, I, I'm quite happy for anyone to say whatever they want. They don't get it. I'm happy to hear it, aren't I? <laughs> because how am I only learning that way? If somebody wants a different process, I need to know they want a different process or they're not getting it. I still need to understand them better because we're all different. So mastermind is really getting to understand the people who are around you so you can get the best. Now if you want to double or even triple your bottom line, which people have done, Julie's going to be talking a little bit about what's happened with her as a result of masterminding. Um, it's up to you, but not everybody comes in from a financial perspective. I'm surprised the amount of people who come into masterminding, and it's not about making money. They want to learn skill sets. They're seeing and understanding what is missing in their business. And for me personally, I believe in any business, there are three personality styles that are necessary. And that is dependent on who the individual is. So for somebody like me, I need someone who can look after finance. I need someone who can look after, um, look after the technical side because that's where my weakness is. So one thing Mastermind is going to really highlight to you where you have holes. So if I put the th three, the two other people around me in my business that I really need, um, my business is going to flow better. And depending on what somebody wants about their business, what I want from my business is very different from what most people are in business for. So it's totally dependent on why you're there and what do you want from it. And it's not always about the dollars and the cents. So it is totally individual for the individual person and that's what is taken into account. Who should attend? I believe everybody should be in a mastermind group. And even though today I'm talking about business masterminding, I've also got a personal development mastermind group that will be starting this, this year. It's all what I call an awareness group. Because I believe that we all know where we're at and what it is we need and it's important to find the group that we need that is going to help us achieve what it is we set out to achieve. So whatever group you're going to be in, you're going to be on a level with knowledge, like-mindedness and experience. Masterminding is for people who make their own decisions. You have to be a business decision maker. I found, um, I put somebody into a group who um, worked for somebody. They could never make a decision. They knew what they wanted to do, um, but they couldn't because they had to get the okay from someone. I do not take wives to husbands partners in one group, same group, and I do that for a reason. 
um, because I've found there will always be one who won't open their mouth because they're too scared to. Um, so there, there is little things like that that are really important in a group to make sure you, you get the best for everybody. Um, <coughs> it's also understanding what the, the skill sets the individual needs to where they're going to be placed also. Uh, and whether I can provide that for them or I've got somebody in my network and I have a large network of people. Um, so depending on where I... I'm a bit like a, um, a Jill of all trades. And so then when I see where somebody is, I then looking at their personality style and people in my network who I'll refer them to. Because for me, if I refer somebody into someone that they're not gonna be compatible with, it's not gonna work very well. So I need to understand how the person thinks who I'm going to refer and who the person is they need. And I'll usually pick that up when somebody is speaking. I'll get this, I know who they need to talk to, I know who they need. It'll, it just comes through listening to them speak because there's somebody who speaks the language that they need to speak. Um, and to me, that's important. So, and being kept accountable. The biggest thing for small business owners um, is accountability, lack of. Um, responsibility and reliability is lack of. Um, I don't think I'm a hard taskmaster. Some of my people think I am. Um, I expect you to do what you say you'll do and to come up with what you say you'll come up with. And I'll love you and hug you. Well, yeah, it's interesting because if you ask someone like Tam, Tam is not a hugger. But he will always hug me goodbye. And somebody said to him one day, why do you always wait? And he said, I wait to give Jenny a hug. But you don't like that. Yeah, but I know she likes it. <laughs> so you get to know the people around you, what they like and what they don't like. Who they are. How much space does somebody need when you're communicating with them? Where, how do they view the world? You can learn this very, very quickly once, if you know how. It's not hard. You've just got to take the time back and take, the, take it off you. Stop, forget about who you are. And look at who someone else is and what the needs are of that person. And once you know the needs of somebody else, then it'll happen. Because if I look after any one of you, you're going to remember I looked after you. We live in a society today where people give back, like to give back to people who do things for them. They don't ask for anything but they will hear something, or they'll see something, or they'll send me something, or they'll just come for a cup of coffee. Because business for me is, and this is the one thing I notice with the internet, people are very locked into um, taking and not giving. And for me, the most important thing in business is what can I give you to make your life better? Because if I can help you, me or any of my network, any of my contacts, can help you achieve what you want to achieve, I'm happy because I've done my job. Because to me, that's what's important, that I support other people to achieve whatever it is they want to achieve. It's up to them whether they do or not. I can only do so, so much with anybody. There are two sorts of groups. First one is a small business accountability, and this is people who need somebody to be telling them regularly what they need to do, to be following up with them um, and really talking about what they need in business. So I might, um, there are two types of groups I've got. So I'm going to ask Margaret, would you like to come and say a few words from a small business accountability perspective? So just briefly, uh, myself, I'm an introvert. I don't always look like an introvert and that's, that's I think, uh, because when we talk about introversion and extroversion from the, the personality profiling system, we're talking about how do you energise? So it's not about what you look like um, because we can, that we can all play those games, but it's more from where, uh, where you actually energise yourself from. So for me, 
if I've got a few people around me, I'm fine, but not for too long because I need to energise myself without people. And that's that's just the difference because I heard the, the introversion and extroversion from yourself um, just a little differently from that, the understanding. So for me, masterminding, I've done two groups. And it's interesting because the call that, that interrupted was actually from one of the previous masterminders that we've connected with. And I'm, prob I'm more than double her age and yet we've connected really well and we support each other in our businesses. We, we hold ourselves, each other accountable as well and, and we're there to, to, to um, look at what can be done differently and support that. So always hold the best in the other person and I think that's one of the things that you'll find through masterminding. My own business has definitely um, developed and grown, but more than that, I've grown. And I think that's the important thing, because if we grow, then our businesses will automatically grow. And you can do that in a safe space, because that's what we need in order to grow and fully grow. Would you like to give your name, please? Margaret can, Wilmink. Can sorry. Can you look in, look in the thing, <laughs> I'm Margaret Wilmink. <laughs> so, um, I'm actually, I've got two. My, my major business, which is what I call uh, my future um, financial business, is actually in network marketing. Um, and I'm also an Uber driver, so I do both. Oh, yeah. hmm. Good. I thought I'd recognise the face, actually. I've seen you before. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, Tam, would you like to come and say a little bit about your experience? Because you've helped, you've been in three groups, I think, three groups. And you facilitated, I don't know how many groups, um, from a small business perspective. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Tam Ho. Uh, just a quick brief about my business. Uh, I run a company that develops uh, mobile apps. So I have a team. Like, yes, I have a team that basically is all operating all around the world. Um, some in the Philippines, some in India, some in China, and so forth. But um, uh, honestly, I started uh, with uh, Mastermind probably about three or four years ago. That was probably my very first group. Um, you know, back then, yeah, we were all in business, we, we think we're in business, but only when you start realising and talking to other business owners, you go, well, you really haven't got a business, you're sort of juggling all sorts of things in one go. But I think the biggest thing for me was being exposed to uh, the profiling system, in this case, the, uh, the Wealth Dynamics. Uh, it really changed my life in that it showed me that I was a, a mechanic, so it's a, basically an introvert who is very systemised in, in that respect. After I was told that this is what I am, and, and I get that, that makes sense, it allowed me just to forget the rest of it, all the other stuff that I thought, do I need to do all these other things? You know, so you have all these millionaires and billionaires out there and they all make it in their own way and we all have our own games to play instead of trying to play all the games. So um, recognising that I was a mechanic really helped me um, focus on how I need to run my business. From that point on I was very systematic about how I did anything. Um, but being in a, in, a, in a group when there are creative people, there are people who are, you know, uh, tend to use their feelings more uh, it's a bit different for me. So, uh, especially when I have a problem in my business, usually I come to a mastermind group with the intention that I have a problem that I bring that I want to get solved. So, for me, in, in our business, if we, if we aren't always being stuck at something, that means we're not really trying to progress at all. So the way I see it is when I come to a group, I normally bring a problem that I really want to solve. Something I've been trying to figure out but I couldn't and I'd put it out on the table and I, you know, the table is there to help. It's basically like my board of directors. I say this is my problem. How do I solve this? Should I, should I fire these people or what? Um, and and you would be surprised. You know, a lot of time my solution is kind of like they're not performing, fire. But uh, you know, there have been uh, people in the group who goes, well, no, no, you can approach it this way or that. And you go, well, I've never thought of that. Yeah, so uh, I think for me masterminding is really a, a board of directors. allows me to think outside the box. You know, offers different solutions. So um, I've been in about three or four groups now, so that goes to show um, how much I value that. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Tam. The other group is an elite group, a strategy group. Very different from the, the small business mastermind group because that is very much on keeping you accountable and keeping you on track because that's what you need. When we come to the elite strategy group, they are different, they're people who know where they're going, they have a solid business, they know what they need, they know what they want, and they're looking for support from people who can help them grow their business. So I'm gonna ask Julie Tasker if she would like to come up, please, and tell her experience in masterminding. Thank you. 
Hi everyone, I'm Julie. I am the Managing Director of Specialist PMC, which is Specialist Practice Management Consultants. We support Australia-wide banks, financial dealer groups and boutique financial advisors. Okay, um, I'll give you a quick snapshot of myself. I'm also an introvert, which means if I could not be standing up here right at this moment, I would be sitting behind my desk drinking my coffee doing my work. Um, but I did want to support Jenny and show her how valued these mastermind groups are. Um, I was a single mother, 31, two kids, phys ed teacher, took a massive change in my life and got introduced into the financial services with my brother. He taught me new skills. I then worked out very quickly that I was very process driven and systemized and worked out that in the financial industry there was a gap in that industry for their compliance and process software um, back-end administration of their businesses. So my story was I got to a point where I had to support myself. I um, First year of business was myself, struggling survival mode really, really struggling with money, had no clue. Second part of my business, I think I got my gross income up to 117,000 um, and was just so proud, but still in survival mode. Then I decided I needed some help. And I think it's important as business owners that we accept help, support, and we surround ourselves with people that are going to contribute different aspects to your business. Now, being an accumulator, I'm one of apparently one of the rare wealth dynamic people where I am very system driven. I will speak very bluntly and tell people, you know, you need to do this and why haven't you done it? Because it's not gonna, you know, get you to a point and I'm not understanding why you're off having your coffees or doing whatever. Um, but we do like to sit behind our desk. So, me wanting to move my business forward, I knew that I had to ask for help. So I had been in contact with Jenny a few years previously, disappeared off the circuit because I was just too busy sitting behind my desk being my introvert. Contacted Jenny and said, Jenny, I need help. My business is doing well, but what can you, how, what support can you give me? Um, she said, Julie, come and have a listen to the mastermind groups. I immediately signed up and became part of the first, well, the elite mastermind group. In that group, I had a group of business owners that were creative, um, could see different aspects where I couldn't. I was needing help in expanding my business and I was needing help in understanding how to look after staff. So in the last year, um, I grew from two staff members and making about 117,000. In one year I've grown to, I've got 10 staff members now and I hit about 700,000 gross. And this year I'm on track to hit the million dollar gross. What did I do differently in that one year? The only thing I can put it down to because I am very process driven. I've got all my systems in place. I've got productivity of my staff. I know exactly what everyone's doing. The only thing I did differently is I joined Jenny's Elite Group. It gave me support, trust. It gave me a safe environment so I could go in there and actually whinge about my staff and get solutions of how I can deal with them, whether it be emotionally, you know, because I am that introvert. I'm not the person who wants to sit there and listen to them that they're feeling sick or they're doing whatever. I'm just like, can you just do your work, you know? Um, Jenny gave me an environment that I could work on my staff, work on being a really good boss, because I didn't know how to do that. I had been a phys ed teacher, that was it. So that's the only thing I did differently was join the masterminding group. I still to this day, that was last year, you know, every week I'm in contact with my peers that were in the group. Um, in joining it so I could have support, it actually then increased my revenue dramatically because I was so much more positive about my business. I was able to 
have creative solutions when I did have problems and I had a support group around me that I couldn't have in my office and I was able to just say what I wanted. So it was about that non-judgment, it was that acceptance um, that worked really well for me. Um, so I am hoping to be part of some of these groups, um, either as a you know, guest speaker or helping you a bit with accountability. So I'm hoping that I can come in and assist Jenny as well. And um, if you are looking to understand your business, grow your business, or get a support team around you, you need a group. And this is where Jenny can offer that to you. So it is an amazing opportunity. I know it costs money, but you need to look at the value of what it delivers and how it can change yourself as a person and how it can change your business. So that's, yeah, it's the best decision I made. So I'm incredibly grateful that Jenny was able to offer it to me. Okay. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you, Julie. Well, you'll notice that I'm an extrovert, but you'll notice the three people who are speaking are all introverts. Now, some, some years ago, you would have never had that with me. When I was on the networking scene, and I haven't been out there now for really for over 12 months, nearly 18 months, probably be 18 months, it's a while, um, even though people still see me out there, I'm not out there. I do very little networking these days. It's interesting because um, when I was there, I was seen out there as an extrovert, as a particular mindset. That is not my mindset, really. I'm really quite introverted because I'm very happy at home because my favourite thing is to write. If I could do what I wanted all the time, I would write. I love writing. Masterminding is a passion for me. It's a passion so that I can, I can support people to, to grow and become who they want to come, become. I love my life. I have a wonderful life. I'm, I'm free to do what I want when I want. Um, and I, I want other people to experience and have that, that they, they, that they have that opportunity to be for themselves who they want to be and where they want to be. Masterminding is not for everybody. If you're a selfish business person, masterminding isn't for you. There are certain qualities you need to be prepared to have and there are things you need to do if you want to be in a mastermind group. You have to care about other people. You have to want to be supportive of other people. You have to want to grow yourself personally and help other people grow. Um, you have to be prepared to walk through your fears if you have any fears that are stopping you from going where you go, want to go. Um, you've got to be prepared to learn from your peers and they listen to what they're saying. Because nobody in a mastermind group says anything to be negative toward you. They're trying to help you understand you better so that you can be the best you can be. Um, and you've got to be prepared to be there every fortnight for 12 sessions, at <coughs> on time. I, have one I had one, actually I've had two, three groups that have all ended up putting a fine on anyone who came late. It was a $10 fine to go to charity if you walked in the door late. Do you think once that was introduced, they didn't arrive early? Because they knew they had to have their cup of coffee before they actually came into the room. So it's really important. You've got to be committed, responsible, reliable, um, and wanting to grow for the next one. Now, depending on your personality style, there is a particular personality, one particular personality style that I work very differently with from any, any other. And that's a style that's what we call the creator in Wealth Dynamics. Do you know Wealth Dynamics at all, John? Yes. Okay. So the creator of Wealth Dynamics will go introvert, extrovert. They, they will swing into the, the mechanic side or they will go into the star side. They are people who are unable to think what they're going to do in the next three months. They do not have the ability to do that. So this is why profiling is so important to me. I have to know if you're someone who 
is an ideas person like that and ideas are coming like that and that and you can't stay on track and you can't focus and you I have to know you're like that so I can help you go where you're going to go so the group can help you so 90 day plans are impossible for a creator so fortnight is a big stretch so we've got to get you for a fortnight we've got to keep you on track because you're going to change your mind because the mind's going creator. The, the, the creators of this world, Richard Branson's a creator. The creators of this world are fast thinking. They think the rest of us are slow, especially people like me, because I'm down the other side. I'm really grounded. So I'm down the other side. I think about things a in a different way to what, say, someone who's away with the fairies up there. The creator is somebody who's creating stuff. You know, they're up the clouds, that personality. You get someone like me as a deal maker who's down there on the ground, the feet there. So we think very differently. By me understanding and a co-facilitator and the group understanding who each individual is helps us to support you to go where you want to go. That's why profiling is just, it's the greatest gift. When I came across Mastermind, I came across Worth Dynamics I start, the very first time I did profiling was about 1983 and it was Maya Briggs. And then I've worked with all of them, a lot over the years. Wealth Dynamics from a small business perspective, I believe, is just mind-blowing because it teaches you who you need to put around you in business. Because in business, if you're on your own, you've got to know everything until you can afford to put other people in there. And until you can afford to put other people in there, you're not going to do all those things very well. So you have to learn how to collaborate, to joint venture, to share, to barter, to whatever, to get what you need in your business so you're going to be successful. And that can't happen when you're trying to do it all. I use, I have five um, virtual assistants, core VAs, um, in the Philippines who, who I work with, um, and I just love them. Tam uses a lot of VAs also. Um, so it's a process for me that's um, a great way, way to go. And it's the way for small business people to go. And what will happen when you've, you've got uh, enough VAs and you've built what you've wanted to build, you're going to have to put people on the ground. So you're not taking work away from anyone in this country because the person who's putting VAs doesn't want to sp spend hundreds of thousands on employees because their business isn't allowing them to do that. For me, in my business, I need five different types of people from a VA perspective. Because a web developer coder is not going to be the same as um, necessarily someone who's going to do graphics or someone who's going to do basic admin or who wants to do social media. Different styles of people. So you have to understand what your needs are, who you need to put around you. Once you know who you need to get around you, it's easy. I, got, I went back to studying. I hadn't, 50 years since I've been in the classroom. This is off, off there. Um, and I got, went back to studying and I have gained the most incredible tools that I can use in masterminding for people. It's blown my mind. So this has a lot to do with the changes because it's even going, I suppose, from the psychology of people even deeper. And it's been absolutely incredible because it's going to support masterminders that much more to go deeper again. So I love it. I have given you a form there. I'm going to ask you if you'd like to fill that out, please. There's no obligation um, to whether you're in a group, want to be in a group, don't want to be in a group, but if you wouldn't mind filling it out, so I have your details, I would appreciate that. Um, and if you'd like to be in a group, I'd love to chat to you about it. As I said, there's no... Um, there's no obligation from either side as such because somebody wants to be in a mastermind group does not necessarily mean they are in a mastermind group because they're either not a group that is suitable for them. Um, up until this year, I have done small business startups, which I'm no longer doing. I will, I will mentor and coach people from small business. But I find now that their gap in business is so great in the skill in skill set that it takes too much time. We're spending too much time um, 
and I'm having to spend a lot of extra time and I don't charge any extra for a masterminder for the time I give. So I was having to put in a lot of time upskilling them and getting them, be it on social media or through the internet or giving them what, but to get them moving. Social media is the way of the future. Um, it, it's mind blowing. It, it's, it's the greatest gift ever given to anyone in business. And if you don't know how to use it properly, use it because it will change your business. You just have to know what platforms you need that are the right ones for you and your business because it's different for different people. I have 38 social media sites. I play out there. I have no... 38 social media sites. I have no... Because I play to different audiences. People are different. People have different needs. So, and I don't suggest to any one of you, if you don't already do a lot out there, that you, you do that. you just got to get out there. Um, but you do need to be on social media. You need a good profile page and you do need a business page. And if you're serious about, serious about business, you'll have it in Facebook, you'll have it in LinkedIn, you'll have it in Google+. Plus. You'll do it on Pinterest. You'll use this right across because they're the main ones when it comes to that. And Instagram as well, if you know how to, to work Instagram with it as well for your business. Most people, when they come into masterminding, and this is why, net, why networking fails for most people, is they really don't know their niche. Um, and to me, that's what's important. Where is your, what is your niche? Start with that niche. And then when you've got that where you want, then you can go to another niche, and then you go to another niche. But you've got to know your niche that you're going to really important. So thank you very much for being here today. I would, if you would like to stand out in the crowd and be different, I'd love to chat to you. If somebody wants to come into masterminding, I would have a cup of coffee with you um, and a chat to you and I would want to know a certain amount about you, about your business, where you want to go, what you want. Uh, I'm not, I don't want to know your financials, it's not necessary. So thank you very much. Please have a cup of coffee or a tea or, and something to eat. There's some food. And I appreciate you giving up your valuable time. Thank you. So thank you very much for being with us today. I'm very pleased that you were able to watch right through. If I can help you, please call me or fill in the expression of interest form and I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.